Hey, this is Stuart Fields again with Mastermind Mondays. I thought I'd share a little bit of a historical background on how this Mastermind Mondays came about, and I'm going to take the long route. So back in 2018 and 2019, I went through a, a year-long certification coach, uh, coaching program and uh, training program with Jack Canfield, and he wrote the success principles, how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And that book had a chapter on masterminding. And of course, masterminding was part of what we had done in the program with each other. And together with about half of those that attended the training and graduated in 2019, we decided to co-author a book. So one of the successes that came out of that program was Life Lessons in Success. And yes, Angie uh, head up, headed up the project with 35 success trainers. So I do have a chapter in this book. So this was co-authored, uh, was published in March of 2020. And um, that led to an idea with a local group that I belong to called uh, Madison Area Business Consultants, where I suggested that maybe we can do a similar project. And then Mary Helen Conroy uh, spearheaded that. She picked up with it and thought it was a great idea. We collaboratively put together, we wish we had known. And We Wish We Had Known is uh, basically a, a book that was born out of the uh, tips of the business consultants in Madison Area Business Consultants, and it's everyday tips uh, from consultants to grow your business. I've got a chapter in that book called Masterminding. Actually, the, the actual title of the book is Collaboration is the Key to Masterminding Success, and in my chapter, I outline a little bit about what masterminding is and also what I've learned over the years to create a great experience. And I thought I'd just share some of those tips here with you today. So group size matters, plan between five and eight members, six I find is an ideal number, meet regularly and my recommendation is twice a month, identify a facilitator, a timekeeper, an invocator, and consider rotating these roles. Uh, I know that in my groups, I, I do that on occasion. Um, it gives everybody the experience and the opportunity to try different skills and learn from each other that way. And the, the role of the facilitator is to guide the meeting. The invocator brings people into a mindful presence and the timekeeper allows everyone to um, have that chance for feedback and make sure that it's divided evenly with, with the time that you have. Uh, kind of the steps or the protocol or the outline for a mastermind group that I found really works well and it comes out of uh, Jack's program, but also I've enhanced a little bit, would be once you establish roles and, and identify those to open with an invocation, and that really centers people, brings them together, brings them into the present focus, then each member would share a new and good. That kind of uplifts everyone and puts you in this space of uh, just a, a more cheerful meeting and keeps it positive. That's important. And it could also be a follow-up from a previous commitment that you made to the group that you have taken action on and the result of that. So it, it's an encouragement for others to make those commitments and uh, share their, their successes. Uh, you might determine the timing based on the number of members present. Uh, maybe there's somebody that has a larger issue or something that you need more time for and you negotiate for that time and you kind of balance a little bit about what is needed uh, based on the member's need at that time. You might have others that don't have very much that they need to address that are immediate pressing needs, but others that have a really uh, a robust, strong pressing issue that needs resolving and tomorrow's the deadline. And this might be the opportunity to give that person a double seat or, or twice the time. Um, after the first person shares, the role of the facilitator is to make sure that everyone understands what is being asked of the group and get that clarification and seek uh, just uh, clarification questions, not contributions to solution setting, but clarification questions. Then after you hear each request and everybody fully understands the issue that's on the table that needs uh, resolving, then with that clarity, you start advancing solutions or brainstorming or, or making suggestions, their thoughts, ideas, uh, resources, et cetera. Um, and then you move on to the next member and repeat this. As you wind down the meeting and come into the end of the meeting, I find that it's always good practice to finish with a balance of both gratitude and from what you had heard when you were in the receiving seat, in the hot seat, if you will, uh, maybe what you choose to take commitment on. And you make that commitment public 
and therefore it's more of an enticement to do the actions that you say you're going to do and then two weeks later once you meet again uh, you kind of feel guilty if you don't do it so it really up levels your approach to your business your life and and the uh, the ideas that are generated and it's a, a mutually supportive peer advisory board so so with that that's kind of a a history of how this series came about. This may or may not be the last in the mini series. I wanted to keep these short, brief, and informative. Hopefully you have found these last three or four sessions uh, beneficial. And I appreciate your comments. Uh, you're certainly welcome to connect with me. Visit my website, www.stuartbforbravofields.com. And uh, there's more information there, but also an opportunity to schedule a meeting with me if you wish to. So. I wish you well and uh, happy masterminding. Happy Mastermind Monday. Bye-bye.